It's time for Orchard Skills. Those who want to try the Raspberry Pi environment but don't have a Raspberry Pi can install the Raspberry Pi desktop on a PC or Mac. It provides the Raspberry Pi OS desktop as well as most of the recommended software that comes with the Raspberry Pi OS for any PC or Mac. With the Raspberry Pi Zero plugged into the USB port, the Raspberry Pi will be programmed automatically allowing you to control its general purpose IOs. This environment takes advantage of the X X86 more powerful processors. Today on Orchard Skills, we'll be setting up a Raspberry Pi development environment that runs on a PC or Mac. Please stay with us and we'll get started. Welcome back. In order to install Raspberry Pi Desktop on your PC or Mac, we will need the Debian Buster with Raspberry Pi Desktop ISO image file. With your favorite browser, head over to https colon slash slash www.raspberrypi.org slash software slash raspberry dash pi dash desktop. And here, let's go down and click on the blue download button which will turn red. Once we do that, get a notification down here that it's downloading, and this will take a few minutes because it's around three gigabytes. Once the download is complete, let's launch Raspberry Pi Imager. And in a previous video, we showed how to install the Raspberry Pi Imager. So please check out that video, and I will put a link in the video description. Choose OS, and for that, we will use custom, and then we'll go to our downloads page, and we'll select the 2012-11 Raspi OS Buster i386.iso. Select that, hit open. Let's click on the USB device, and then click on Write, and then click on Yes. And this will take a while. Okay, continue. Let's boot up our machine with the image we just created. Okay, go ahead and scroll down to Graphics Install, hit Enter. Okay, scroll up, American English, hit continue. Guided use entire disk, hit continue. Select SCSI3, continue. All files in one partition, continue and finish partitioning and writing changes to disk. Continue. And let's go click on yes. Hit continue. Okay, let's say yes to install Grub. Hit continue. And let's make sure we click on slash dev dash SDA and then click on continue. Okay, installation complete. Let's click on continue. Okay, great, we're booting up the Raspberry Pi desktop. And there we go. So let's go ahead and click on Next. And let's select the United States, use English language, use English keyboard. And let's go ahead and set our time zone and click on Next. And let's go ahead and hit Next and update software, click on next. Okay, system's up to date. Click okay, and let's go ahead and restart. So 
this opened up. Just go and click on the browser. Let's go to click on Orchard Skills and let's customize the desktop here. So let's go down to here and select this. Copy that back to our terminal. Paste that there. Hit enter. Let's click on the Raspberry Pi. Go to Preferences and go down to Main Menu Editor. Go to Preferences and let's just go ahead and click on all these boxes. Scroll down, click on those, hit OK, click on the menu again, go to preferences, and let's click on theme and appearance, and for our widgets, let's do Arc Dark, and for icon themes, let's do Papyrus, and for mouse cursor, let's click on Breeze, and for window border, let's click on Arc Dark, and then hit Apply and then close and then let's click on our taskbar right click go to panel settings and go to bottom and hit close okay great okay let's do it this here Copy that. Go back to here and hit paste. Back here. Do sudo package. Copy that. Paste. to install. Let's go ahead and do this whole line here to install .NET 5. Copy that. Go here. And do a paste. And hit enter. And this will install .NET 5 SDK. Okay, let's test it out. Let's do, let's issue the command dot net dash dash version, and we got five point zero dot one zero one. Awesome. Go back here. Let's scroll down here. Let's also add three point one. Okay, let's this command here. Be that. Go back here, do a paste, enter. Back to here, scroll over, and do this copy. So these are the packages that will contain .NET 3.1. Go back here, and hit paste. Hit enter. And then down here, our last command. Copy that. Back to here. And do a paste. And hit enter. And all these commands will be in the de description on how to install everything in the readme.markdown. Okay, great. So now let's do a .net dash dash list SDKs. Hit enter. Only notice we have 3.1.404 and 5.0.101. We have .net core 3.1 and .net 5. Another thing we can do is we can click on Desktop Preferences, 
select on the image let's collect our sand and hit open then OK so what we can do now is we can go to orchard skills github and let's go ahead and scroll down to our repositories let's look on that go to the code let's copy that let's go back here and cd to documents and let's make a directory call it github cd into github and let's go get clone Paste that, and we've cloned that repository. So let's cd to orchard skills dot orchard core dot cms, and then cd again into the project directory, and let's do a dot net build, restoring all the packages. This will take a while. Okay, great. Now let's do a dot net run. And there you go. We have, let's do a control click. And there's our startup page. We do any of those, yeah. Our site name will be Orchard Skills. Uh, let's go ahead and use the blog theme. Use SQLite and username, sales, email, hit our credentials, password, and hit the finish setup. Okay, great. There's our web page. Click on our blog, scroll down, scroll up, click on about, scroll down. go ahead and click on the admin to go into the dashboard, enter our credentials. Remember me and hit login. And there's our admin. So let's go ahead into our content, content items. And there's our content items. Okay, great. So one last thing might want to do after do control C to exit. Go to clear to clear the screen. So since I'm using, in this particular case, VMware to do the virtual machine, I can also do a, a sudo apt install open vm dash tools. Hit yes. Okay, great. Once that's installed here, so we can go up to our VM tools, do that, and now we have a full desktop. That takes the whole resolution, so that's a lot nicer. We can go in here, preferences, go here, go into panel settings, and let's increase our icons here to at least 48. So then let's go ahead and hit the browser, and let's go ahead and bring up the terminal, and we can go ahead and edit, go into preferences here, and display, and we can go ahead and modify this here, Make this a lot bigger. 24, select, okay. So now everything's bigger here. Now let's go into documents, go into GitHub, go into orchard, skills at orchardcore.cms, and go there and do a .net run. And then here we can just go and control click. So now our blog is a lot much better. Go to about, so fonts are better. Back in admin. 
uh, much better. Go into content, content items. There's a cut to minus. On the blog, or blog post. Okay, great. So one other thing you can do here is plug in the Raspberry Pi Zero. And you'll notice we get the little icon here for the GPIO. Click on that. Okay. Hit OK. Raspberry Pi Zero is connected and we've got GPIO. I'm going to do more blocks and add extension and do the GPIO. Hit OK. Now we have the GPIO device. OK, great. Exit it out and shut down. To recap, we downloaded the Raspberry Pi desktop or PC, Mac. We used the Raspberry Pi imager to create a USB boot device. We installed the Raspberry Pi desktop. We installed the SDK for .NET Core 3.1 and .NET 5. We customized our desktop. We cloned an Orchard Core CMS web application. We built and run Orchard Core CMS web application. We browsed the website. We entered into the dashboard. We plugged in a Raspberry Pi Zero to a USB port and configured the GPIO expander. We ran Scratch 2 and showed that the GPIO expander was working. Now, if you missed or didn't understand something, that's okay. There's a detailed blog post that describes all the steps. There is also a GitHub repository with the complete source code. All this information is in the video description. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up icon. Also, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get a notification when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.